Good evening, Living Truth. We're glad you're here for the Hangout Week 9. Um, and this week, we're, we're posting on June 1st on a Monday, but we've got some important stuff to cover. But before we kind of dive in, we just wanted to welcome you here, ask you to share this, this video um, as you're watching it, let other people know that you're here, comment on it, like, subscribe. What are, I've been watching too many YouTube videos, I guess. Um, but... Without further ado, we will introduce ourselves. I'm Jeff. I'm the youth pastor here at Living Truth. My name is Jennifer Williamson. I'm the children's director here at the Pace Campus. Norman Sullivan, pastor here at the uh, Living Truth Schmuckla Campus. <laughs> and Andy DeGuire, discipleship pastor. And if you are new here, the reason we specify Pace slash Shemukla, because it's all the same thing, we have an East Milton campus now as well. So if you are looking for a church in the East Milton area, we've got our East Milton campus that meets at the gym on Bobby Brown Road. They had their official launch on Sunday that went really well yep. from what I hear, um, which kind of leads us into, we're going to talk a little bit about Sunday, but just so you know, the big bulk of what we're talking about tonight, we're going to have two, two topics, and one is going to be celebration. You'll find out why here in a minute. We're going to spend a little bit of time just celebrating some things, um, one thing in particular, and we are going to talk a little bit about some things that we can do better um, as a church, as people, um, and that kind of thing. So those are the big topics, but before we dive into those two, how did Sunday morning go here at Living Truth? We got any takers? Pastor Norm, I see you mentioned you wanted to talk about a beverage that might be served <laughs> well, coming right, up. So, uh, you know, Let's qualify that. This is the uh, yeah. So this is uh, we are Baptist. Let's see, what, have, have we had three? We've done three. We've done three. I right. think yeah, three. Yeah, we've done three uh, services back, gathering again uh, together again, uh, and you guys have done a great job with it. We appreciate that. Everybody's spacing out. Uh, everyone's uh, cooperating uh, as we're coming together. We uh, we have the the main sanctuary spaced out. The dining halls, space out. I know I heard some children in there this uh, past Sunday, and uh, that's good. Good. I don't to hear know who noise. that was. Good to hear. Good to hear some noise. Uh, we have uh, overflow back in the kids' building. <clears throat> a couple of our big rooms there also. So, I was going to say, if you're having problem watching uh, online, I know I've had people every now and then their internet's weebling wobbling out on them at times. Uh, you can come here. And watch it if you're like, well, I, I'm still trying to get some safe, safe distance. Well, you can watch in one of our uh, children's rooms. Uh, there's hard, not many people are in there. If you want to go in a, a room that's uh, fairly vacant, you know, you can really have plenty of space in there. Uh, and you can watch, uh, watch the live feed. Uh, we've got that set up, so it's not going to conk out on you. Lord willing, the power doesn't go out just because I said that. But uh, so you can do that. Um, the um, Everybody's done a good job coming, uh, being here on time and leaving when we have to get everybody out so we can clean up in between services. And, uh, you know, and, and, and Andy's going to talk about that here in just a second, uh, thinking of some people for us. But uh, coffee, we've not been doing that. Not this Sunday, but the next Sunday, which I believe is June 14th, uh, we're going to bring coffee back. Ah, Amen. That'll we'll be bring like, the coffee back. That'll be like sacred grounds. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> so, man. I just so, had to. Yeah, there's just too many. So, You're not going to do when everybody stays awake during the preaching on I that, know, that week. I know. Uh, <laughs> people will be staying awake while I'm preaching. Uh, I well, know. Are you, you going to be in so Hebrews? I, really did, I didn't realize I was uh, <laughs> Hebrews. Uh, I was waiting on it. So... Uh, yeah, I didn't know I was so dependent on people staying awake uh, with the coffee. But anyway, we're going to do that. We'll have a, Obviously, it'll be a different look, a different setup. And we'll still have to, you know, at that point, I'm, I'm going to assume that governor and everybody hasn't changed things. So everyone will still be not gathering inside. Uh, but you'll be able to at least get your coffee fresh and, and all that. And uh, so, but again, we thank those who have been doing a great job uh, making this happen. Uh, I know that uh, Jennifer and Megan uh, have really done an excellent job getting some people to do some extra work. And Ann, mm -hmm. you want to thank some of those for us? Well, absolutely. Uh, we have some great volunteers. Um, 
between those who have just stepped up, volunteered, come like I think uh, Andy and Kathy Lewis and some of the other folks who are doing it every week. Uh, and then our, our uh, Jamie and Daryl, uh, Lance, I mean, so many, and I apologize if I missed your name, but our greeters, our greeters are stepping in and uh, they're going literally the extra mile. They're showing up, uh, they're serving and cleaning and just to make sure that you feel comfortable uh, to come here and worship together and gather. So, uh, Can I, I say this real quick? Yes. Because you started mentioning a few names, and we know that sometimes we miss names. If you've seen somebody go, going over the top, going over and above, comment and let oh, us yeah, know that's who right. people that's were a great and we can idea. love on them. Because yep. honestly, we could name most of the people in our church at this point. Yep. But if you've seen somebody that's just gone over and above, comment brag on them in the comments there yes. love on them tag them that kind of thing uh because we have been we've had a ton of warriors that have been yeah. making this place incredible jennifer said it's the cleanest she's ever seen our church in <laughs> how many years have you been here five uh, almost four four yeah. okay four years cleanest we've ever been so yeah Sorry, go ahead. well i i mean i had one couple that uh, and i always get nervous asking folks you know uh, we are asking our greeters if you come back to do a little bit of extra. And I had one couple just wrote back and said, we love our church. We'd be glad to serve. I mean, just comments like that are not unique. Folks are just coming with a just a grateful heart to serve and to serve the Lord so that others can enjoy this place together. It's good to gather again. So I want to say thank you personally for all those who are doing that. So, Jennifer, you mentioned that there are some things you wanted to remind people of on Sunday mornings. Yeah, remind parents that uh, all those printables that you're getting in your email and you're getting in uh, the Facebook uh, kids' pages and also with Megan's page, with her uh, junior's page, all of that material is made available in the dining hall. We've even got some individual box crayons you guys can pick up for your kids, give them something to do. We have kids' sermon notes pages. So um, for the little ones who may struggle with filling in the words because maybe they're not spelling yet, they can go ahead and do the kids' sermon note page, which gives them an opportunity to draw certain pictures explaining pastor's sermon and just keeps them engaged as well as instead of you guys having to print the material at home, it's readily available for you guys to pick up in the dining hall. Awesome. So we are prepared for you and your family, all ages, everybody. Uh, I will say I want to give a quick plug. If you are a wife and you're tired of your husband being at home at this point, like a lot of wives are, you can get them out of the house a little extra time on Sunday mornings and they can serve with the security team and with the parking team. I know they've been needing a little extra help. They've been, they've been fully staffed, but they just, they'd like to have a few more people so they can give people a little right. bit more of a break. So women, wives, get your husbands out of the house for an extra hour or two on Sunday morning to work with the security or parking team. Um, hey, we'll, shout, that, we'll shout out to Clint. I know he stepped up, Clint Fowler, one of our servant leaders. He's been on the Hangout before, uh, but a thank you to Clint for doing that. But I agree. Yeah, we, we need guys. So if you can do that. And, of course, we pick just the coolest month of the year to ha -ha, to uh, ask you to come out and serve. But seriously, it, it really does um, contribute to the overall ease and environment when we have folks doing that. Amen. So today is a special day for Living Truth Church. <laughs> um, yeah, a very special day. Today we celebrate the official 20 years of Living Truth Church and of Pastor Norman Sullivan. All right. I know P. Norm does not want us to mention that latter part, but we are, and he can deal with it and take it out of my paycheck um, because we, we are also celebrating the fact that he has been a faithful follower of the Lord for 20 years that has led this church in a way Amen. that it's impacted lives. And if you're watching this right now, it, his leadership has impacted your life and this church has impacted your life. So we're celebrating all that today. And we just wanted to take a moment. We, we have not, we had not forgotten that this was coming up, but we wanted to celebrate in a special way and COVID happened. So the plans that we'd been working on since December, uh, kind of under the radar that P Norm did not know about, have been exposed and uh, we're gonna have to bump some of those things back because we didn't want to just modify due to COVID. We wanted to do the things the way that we, we felt like we, we wanted to do and we felt like uh, would, you know, would be a good celebration. So mm. today we're gonna take a moment just to reflect and, and think about what this, what this church has meant to us 
and, and what, uh, what our time here under Norm's leadership has been. Um, but we also ask, if you're here, you're tuning in with us, comment and let us know. Here we go with the comments again. Comment and let us know what Living Truth has meant to you. Like, let us know the special moments at Living Truth or the ways that you've grown as a follower of Jesus, the ways that, that Living Truth or Pastor Norm's leadership have impacted your life. And let us read that and celebrate that. Let Pastor Norm get home tonight after the hangout and read a bunch of comments of the ways that he has had an impact on your life or the way that Living Truth has had an impact on your life. And let's celebrate this together. But we're going to start with just the three of us talking about our time here. And we're going to go from longest to shortest amount of time at the church and uh, just talk about our time and how the impact it's had on our life. So, well, Pastor Andy. I've been here a little bit of time. So, uh, <laughs> maybe about 14 years. Um, and... It has been, uh, well, I knew I had uh, an opportunity to connect with Norm uh, long distance. We talked by phone before I came, and I, I still remember sitting uh, in your house there on Savannah Drive, uh, the old office, and uh, doing an interview with you, and I remember you just saying, man, my heart is that we'll be a church of disciples who make disciples, and I'm, I'm proud to be a part of this church that really does, that is really what we want to do. And I knew that when he said that, I was like, I'm in the right place. This is what I want to give my life to. So uh, it's, been, it's been exciting um, to see our church um, transition and, and go through lots of different uh, stages on that um, pathway, I guess. CPR groups were, of course, they were all in homes back then. Because we didn't, we didn't have uh, any facility, so we were meeting in homes, still trying to get people to to go. I remember going on a first mission trip, at least that I was, I went on. Uh, I think that one was to, I think we went to New Orleans. I think you went on that one too. <laughs> that was interesting. Mission trips, yes. Uh, and so we, it's been neat to be a part of those through the years. Um, I can say this church has uh, definitely. Um, ministered to my family, many of you know, uh, through my wife's brain aneurysm and that recovery, and so many of you loved on us, and I'll never forget um, a trip by Norm and Robbie Turner up to um, UAB Hospital and uh, sitting across in McAllister's Deli, and I don't even remember what they said per se. I just remember that they drove 250 miles one way just to come check on us and love love on our family. And the church has been very, very gracious. And then, of course, recently with Heidi's uh, cancer journey. So um, we definitely felt loved on here. Um, but it's just really been exciting to see, even in these most recent years, about discipleship groups and really seeing, man, that's that's like the extra push that, uh, that we really need. So um, it, it's... It, it truly has. Well, and I can say this personally, I have grown under your leadership. I think you've taught me a lot about grace. You really have. Um, I tend to be, uh, now don't be laughing at home, all right, y'all, about, I tend to be on the legalistic side just a little bit. That's probably my bent. So I've learned a lot about, as Norm has taught me, that when people come in, you just don't know what people come in this building with. You don't know what they're background or environment is and so you've taught me a lot about cutting people some slack and loving on them and just being gracious to them so i, I thank you for for sharing that with me amen. Mm -hmm. amen i have been at living truth uh january will be 10 years wow january of 2011 and i was a young dumb <laughs> college student of 20 years and uh, I was 20 years old. I was not a 20-year college student. I was a 70-year college student, um, which is not far from, from that. So uh, seven years to get a bachelor's degree. But that's not what we're talking about here, everybody. Mind your own business. So um, January of 2011, Norm took a chance on a dumb college kid who is now a dumb, aging, married husband and father. Um, still dumb, but some other things have changed. And uh, I'll say that you know, just kind of moving forward through my time here. I grew up at a great church with great people, people who loved me, people who rocked me in the nursery and invested in me as a child, who poured into me as a student, who hired me as an intern for a couple of years. Wonderful church. 
Um, and so this, I don't want this to be taken wrong by, by that church or anybody there. I love those people to death. Um, they're still family. But this, this church, from the moment I walked through the door, felt like home. And uh, I remember being, you know, being interviewed by Pastor Norm, as you mentioned earlier. Uh, but we were at the cutting board in Pace over at some mullet dinners a couple times. And, uh, you know, seeing that he was willing to take a risk on a guy that, that had just filled in at Living Truth a couple times um, whenever they needed a worship leader. And so I filled in and, and then ended up getting hired. And, you know, that started out as a part-time worship leader position that grew into uh, – you know, a worship leader slash youth leader position, and then a full-time youth leader, worship leader position, and now full-time youth pastor. Um, but it's always just been being invested in by the church, being welcomed in as, a, as family. This is where I didn't meet my wife. Uh, I've known her for a long time, but this is where I guess we noticed each other, little short, brunette, Katie Owens. And uh, this is where we ended up getting married. This is uh, where we started our family and dedicated a child. And uh, this is, yeah, this has been home. Um, hmm, starting to, starting to feel that a little bit. Uh, everybody just mind your business again. Everybody's getting in my grill. So, but then I also, you know, I, I, I don't think there's really anything else that I need to say about the church. Like I've grown here more than I've ever grown in my walk with the Lord. There's been a lot of, form, you know, a lot of times that were very, impactful in my life. My time in college was very impactful in my life, but this has been a sustained, you know, a sustained time of, of walking with the Lord that, that I've experienced through living truth. Um, you know, but I, then I look back at Pastor Norm's leadership and, uh, gosh, I've been around for half of it at this point, which is crazy. Um, so see, you know, just the little things of seeing a leader who walks the walk and doesn't just talk the talk, who if he gets up and he spends a year talking about going and making disciples, it's because he's making disciples of which I am one. If he's talking about, um, you know, taking a step of faith, it's because he has taken steps of faith and continues to take steps of faith of which we are sitting in one of them as a church and as a building, That's all right. of that. Um, you know, I, I tell people all the time that whenever our church was meeting at SS Dixon Intermediate. So I was here for a year and a half whenever Pastor Norm started talking about this place out in the middle of Shamukla that I'd heard about and been to my whole life. I'd gone to the Grand or the Farmer's Opry, right? I'd, I'd been here many times, um, heard the Salmo Band, came to special events. But whenever Pastor Norm started talking about, hey, you know that Grand Ole or the Farmer's Opry out there, uh, you know, and I thought, this guy's, this guy's bonkers. I've only known him for a year and a half, and I, I'm starting to think, man, my job, this, this job that I have at Living Tree Church is going to, I'm going to be the first one to go, right? I'm the part-time guy. They're going to put me on the chopping block first when this church starts to go downhill because we moved into the middle of nowhere. Um, but just this move was such um, a showing of Pastor Norm's wisdom and Pastor Norm's following the Lord because the growth that has happened at this church since we've been here versus when we were in the middle of Pace, right? Pace growing community, but we come out here and then Pace decides it wants to start growing north. And uh, that's, that's all props to the Lord for what the Lord did, but it's props to a faithful servant who followed God and did what the Lord was telling him to do. And so just over and over, time and time again, we've seen Pastor Norm follow the leadership of the Holy Spirit. We've seen him take steps um, in wisdom, um, and take chances on people, again, of which I am one. And uh, we, you know, just that's that's what the last 10 years have been for me as a church that's invested and grown me and a leader that's that's been an example. So, so I uh, came here a little over four years ago, which seems so minute at this point. But um, I'll tell you how kind of we came about. We we my husband was invited multiple times to come. Uh, for actually over two years, we were invited to come, and I did not want to make the drive. We live um, on the other side of Baghdad, and so it's a good 35 to 40 minute drive for us out here. And uh, the first Sunday of January 2016 rolled around, and our family was desperate. We were desperate for something fresh from God. We just needed to be in the right, we weren't in the right place. We needed to be in the right place. So we showed up inside the doors and walked in, and uh, my husband knew some people. I knew no one. And um, we took our kids to the kids' ministry, and we left that day, didn't meet anybody extra, didn't talk to anyone, just left. 
and when we I got didn't me- I didn't meet you. Didn't meet you that day. Lot? No, uh, Andy didn't tackle yeah, me. Right. No, no, yeah, seriously. Right. Um, didn't get a welcome mug. Nothing. Just walked in and walked out. And uh, we, our kids got in the car, and the first thing our our youngest was not. Co- he was a little over two at that point. Oh my. And all three of them said, can we please go back here? Can we please, can you please take us back there? And they were begging to be at this church. So we came back and um, it was, I hadn't, I had gotten to meet Pastor Norm on a Wednesday night, um, which I didn't know really who I was speaking to at that moment (laughs) because he just sat down at the table and started talking to us. And uh, then I met Teresa and Teresa and I quickly formed a friendship and, and she invited me to help her with VBS. And uh, uh, long story short, I remember the, the day uh, we were painting VBS props. And uh, Pastor Norm walked in. And I, the day before, I was a photographer for 15 years. I had served in other churches for over 20 years. I had worked in other churches. But I didn't really tell anybody my background story or that I had worked in kids' ministry or anything. I just kind of kept to myself. And... Um, We were in there and Pastor Norm walks in and and he didn't know the day before I had closed my photography business because God, I felt God telling me it was time to close the business. Mm. And so I shut it down and I closed the bank accounts and everything. And the only person that knew that was my husband. And uh, Pastor walks in and he says, have you ever, would you consider kids ministry? He said, I keep praying about it and you're the person that keeps coming to my heart. And we had, we had already had that, that sense of home. From the moment we walked in the doors, we felt home. We felt like this is where we were supposed to be. And I looked and I said, well, let's get through VBS first. <laughs> we'll talk about it. And it was one of the greatest experiences ever to serve with Miss Teresa and to serve under pastor and to see how everyone got along, how the youth pastor was involved in the kids ministry and how everybody just worked together. And it wasn't me versus you it was us together and that's that's what clicked and i remember pastor andy and pastor norm over and over again when the first few months we were here saying we're better together we're better together and and i just began to feel such at home here so i want to personally i just want to thank you i want to thank you for stepping up 20 years ago and accepting a call when i know i've spoken with Teresa. i know it was scary mm-hmm. i know there were times when financially it was probably terrifying but thank you so much because mm-hmm. your leadership for me personally you've pushed me outside of my comfort zone you know this um, <laughs> and i need that i need somebody who who will say hey you can do this it's okay it's okay to do what god's calling you to do and to go beyond that step for where you're comfortable at and and i just i appreciate you i appreciate miss teresa cuz i know as a family it takes a family it takes mm, a wife being right. supportive and so i appreciate you both dearly mm. amen um Pastor Norm, do you want to follow that up with anything? <laughs> All right. I kept my stuff together. That was good. Um, you know, uh, first of all, all glory goes to God. You know that. Uh, you know, the only thing, let me be clear, the only thing I've ever done right is say yes to God. Uh, you know, we talk about all the time about next steps. That's that's it. You know, and and. You know, um, you know, when God puts something out for us there, uh, the kind of people we want to be are the people that are the ones that can say, uh, that I like to say, it ain't no step for a stepper. You know, we need to be steppers, you know. And, and um, so uh, I'm sitting here, as Andy shared that, uh, I was thinking about many of the <laughs> Andy episodes. Oh, no. I'm not going to do any. I'm not going to do any. I mean, the episodes we've had, 20 years, man, we've had some fun. I mean, we've had some. We all agree, it's important. It is. It is important. I mean, it is important. Uh, You know, Jeff, you know, Jeff, the knucklehead, he is, I mean, I appreciate that he said I was young and dumb, and now he goes, now I'm just a little older and dumb. And 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 that's just, because I was thinking it, you know, but that's just. No, this is where you say, oh, no, man, you're not dumb anymore. But I'm not, but I'm not like that, you know, so I wouldn't do that, you know. Yeah, Jennifer, yeah, it's the most recent one I remember, you know, I I do remember that when, when, uh. I was getting, I mean, I literally w- had picked up the phone, I mean, I mean, and was about to call the seminary looking for a, 
uh, children's director. We'd had so much trouble trying to get that position right. And uh, we were ripe. We needed it. And uh, then I realized this little voice said, that Jennifer's over there with your wife. Who does that on a weekday? Helping her with the VBS preparation. They're, they're over there working real hard. I hung up the phone and thought, per adventure, you know. Them King James words, per adventure, maybe she's, no, I, I didn't think that way. Um, just thinking maybe she's, she's the one, you know, and then, of course, uh, God has blessed us with uh, people with integrity, people to do whatever it takes to get the job done. It is a team, you know, uh, you know, and, and uh, you talk about the uh, comfort zone. Anybody that's known me for a long time knows that I, I, I remember that as a Sunday school teacher all the way back to Pine Terrace days uh, that I would, in my class, I would tell them, look, I, my job is to help get you out of your comfort zone. God gets me out of my comfort zone, so uh, I'm going to get you out of your comfort zone, you know, and, and that is the thing, is just to be disciples and make disciples, you know. It, we're, this, I don't think doing what we do is difficult. Yes, we have some challenging life situations, but uh, if we just do what God has laid out in front of us and don't try to do that much more, you know what he does? He makes what we do look extra, you know? Um, you know, and, 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 you know, and thank you, Jennifer, for bringing up Teresa. You know, with it, without her, uh, none of this happens. I mean, just imagine uh, you've been married many years, the Lord wakes you up, or not wakes you up, speaks to you in your quiet time and says, God's calling you to preach and tells you then to quit your job and then to just start out there. And to those that don't know, it was on June 1st of 2000 that I was just out here. We were out here as a family of four children. Uh, we didn't have the people. Uh, you know, we, we've actually, you know, starting East Milton, there's people from our church, our congregation has gone there. They're going to help there. The, the deal with when we started before was we were going to be in the same community as uh, Pine Terrace Church that started us. And we were not going to take anybody from there. We were just going to go. And, and so God has just sent people uh, to us. I'm not a great gatherer type person. I'm not a great personality that I know. I, you know what? All I've ever done is just did what God said. And, and uh, even if it was to go talk to somebody about Jesus that I didn't know or thought it was a scary situation i just do it you know and and god has sent us great people uh persons of peace uh people that um uh that that god was working on their hearts and so we've just we've just done we've just worked with those people and god and they've they've been a, we, we have a saying about being living truth living truth tough uh you know we had school in the uh, I mean, church in the school, and, you know, we had nursery. Oh, Lord, God help us. Our nursery was on the, in the halls of the school. I mean, we cleaned it up, okay? We cleaned it up before COVID-19 was cool. We cleaned up cool. Uh, but we did that, and, and we'd have to tear down and set up. We did that for 13 years, maybe. 2012, October 2012 is when we came here. So, so. 12, so yeah, 12. 12 years we set up and tore down you do that 12 times 52 we did that and so thank you for all those that were with <laughs> yes. us at the time those who have moved away That's or those right. who got tired of us and couldn't handle it anymore yep. hey you know what it's 624 right. times just you know 624 times <laughs> except that one time after hurricane ivan that there was still about a dozen of, a dozen of us that showed up all right <laughs> uh we showed up we met outside and, and prayed and Wow. And that was it. But God has been so mm. good to us. He's Amen. been good to us. All those years that we were tearing down and setting up, I'm amazed at how often the weather was decent when we were loading up and tearing down. Oh, my goodness. And then the onslaught would come on afterwards. Mm. I mean, I'm going to bet you all that time. I mean, I don't know. The setup team, they may say more times <laughs> faster. Uh, but I think those people like uh, when a lot, like a Robbie Turner, I'm getting names now, would come along and say, hey, I, we got this setup team. Get out of here. You know, and. So I was part of that team for a long time till, you know, uh, Lord sent uh, great people to to step Those in. Those were the were they the mighty wait what were you, were they the mighty men? Hey David's, David's mighty, mighty men, men right there. Mighty men. David's mighty men. That's right. <laughs> oh, Pastor Jared Owens headed that up right. for a little while at one That's point. Right. 
Yeah. I think he was young enough, early enough, dumb enough. Whenever he came along, he uh, said, "Hey, we got a thing for you, right?" Yeah. He tells that story often. Uh-huh. He yeah. wears that like a badge yeah. of honor. So, oh, yeah. oh, I remember one time talking to um, Travis, um, our previous worship leader, and he. I said, "Man, I sure appreciate you know what you guys are doing like that." And he said, "Really?" I said, "Yeah." He said, "Why don't you come about seven a.m. and help us get started?" I was like, "Oh." So then I started showing up and doing that and recruiting for guys like that. So yeah, I mean. Man, looking out at these chairs here, I mean, I'm thinking of those hard <laughs> cafeteria chairs that we used to set up and tear down and all that kind of stuff. You know what? And we got these chairs right before COVID, so I, we apologize, everybody. It's our fault. We went soft on you. Oh, man. Still, yeah. They're still fresh. They're still fresh. They don't even need to be clean, but we still clean them every week. Yeah, oh, yeah. So, um, anything else? Any last words before we dive into what I feel like is about to take a good bit of time? You know, I, I will say that. I will just say thank you to everyone who's been a part of what we've been doing these years. Again, it's it's not me. Uh, it's we. And, um, you know, and, I, I, hey, I'm doubling down. I believe God's got plenty great stuff ahead of time. I think we're getting on new things. We listen to him as what God wants us to do as far as our discipling efforts mm-hmm. and making disciples that make disciples. Uh, we just want to get better. Uh, and and so if hey if we've ever harmed you or hurt your feelings in the middle of this I apologize uh, we just want to make disciples that make disciples and uh, so uh, what we try to do is try not try to make it where the way we do it doesn't hurt people's feelings but if the gospel offends you then that's mm-hmm. on you that's right you know uh, we're gonna preach the gospel uh, Jesus died for it so I think it's worth us preaching uh, the truth and love and uh, so we'll keep doing that. So you keep praying for us as we pray for you. And, again, for those that are watching that have been a part of any of this, uh, we thank you. We've had a lot of military folks come in, train, move away, and are part of that. Uh, you know, we got folks in Japan that still watch some of us right now. Uh, evidently, somebody's in Taiwan that we don't know about. If you are here, identify yourself. Uh, <laughs> then uh, we've got folks out in Washington, uh, Oklahoma, that keep tabs with us all over the shoot all over the world uh our friends in israel uh our friends in guatemala and dominican and so um you know i I could we could hog this up and it's june 1st 2000 was when we started and and that's why we wanted to have a special night uh which was not my idea thank you guys for thinking of that um and but uh we wanted to talk we didn't want to let the day slip by uh, without even mentioning that. And like Jeff said, we'll, we'll do some things. You know, we can talk about it later. Uh, but we want to move on to some other things. We talked a little bit about memorials at the beginning of, the, at the beginning of this campaign, right? Hmm. So we know that there is nothing wrong with looking back. And 20 years of a church impacting a community and impacting the lives of people is worth looking back on tonight as well as when we, when we do a little bit more celebrating in the future. If you want to bring a little something to Pastor you know, Norm and celebrate him, you can do that on Sunday. Just uh, slip it in his office or... We'll give it to him. Whatever you'd like to do. I know he's going to get mad at me for saying that, but some people like to do things like that. So yeah. um, that is that is welcomed by all of us. Maybe not Norm, but but it is. So. And last thing I'll say again, I want to reiterate this: just be sure you share the love with Sister Teresa. That's uh, right. Because you know what, being a pastor may be a difficult thing because you got a target on your back, <laughs> but being the pastor's wife, yeah. man, that's. Mm. I don't know what she said. I would think that's got to be the worst, you know, because because she's got to accept that I said God said this, uh, you know, when I'm hearing it from God. Uh, and so she's she's had a lot of faith in me. So thank you for that. And so, again, you know, share that love. She's it's not as if she hasn't gone through. So I mean, she's had uh, some up and down journeys as well. I mean, health wise and, and things. And God's brought her through. That's right. That's right. So you're right. She's still one of the people who serves. If you mm. know Teresa, you know that she serves every time she steps in these doors. Yep. She's looking for a way to minister to people and love on people. And she, I remember when we first started coming, she friend requested me. Like, like we, I didn't even know. I told you, we didn't speak to anybody. I think I got a friend request that afternoon from her. Wow. I don't even know how she knew we were in the building. Um, but she just began checking on us. She was one of the first people. She'd send me a message. Are you okay? How's everything going? So she was here. She's, I just see her serving in such massive ways. And, of course, in our kids' ministry. So shout out to her for that. 
when she definitely takes things seriously, mm-hmm. uh, maybe things too seriously sometimes, but uh, she, but it's we because... We can edit that out. Don't say no, that. Pastor no, you don't have to edit that out, but she cares. It's because she cares. And thank you. Love you, Teresa. And for my kids, you know, they're doing their own thing, but, you know, you know, Brittany, Joshua, Melanie, and Jordan, I know you're not watching this, but if you are... <laughs> Put a heart thing on there, all right? <laughs> and I'll, one more thing real quick before we, before we continue on. If you don't know this yet, um, working at a church and being a pastor is not a normal nine to five. And there are a lot of evenings that are spent going to homes. There's a lot of different things. And, and all of this is done by the, the, the senior pastor more than anybody. Um, the, the odd hours, the you know extra time that's put in, which then puts more of a burden on Teresa. You know, you're raising four kids that she ends up at home with the kids a lot. I know this because I've seen the times where Katie is at home with Mary Catherine, you know, and I can't imagine having four kids where you're the senior pastor having to do all these different things and your wife is having to, you know, take up the slack at home in some ways. Mm. Um, so, so absolutely, Teresa definitely needs some love and support there. But we wanted to transition. We're kind of going, this is highs and lows tonight, um, because as a community, as a country, we want to address the elephant in the room, and, and if you live under a rock, you may be unaware, but, but those of us that don't, we, we know that our country is hurting in a lot of ways, mm. and we didn't think, this is part of the reason why we're posting this tonight, because we didn't want to delay. Um, we wanted to celebrate 20 years on the day that we celebrate 20 years, but we also wanted to address um, a hurting community in, in ways that we as a church and as individuals and as you watching this right now um, can be better advocates for for our black community for our people of color in general um, and and talk about it and we don't come here saying that we have all of the answers Um, in fact I talked with a gentleman today that said that he's like look I I like I I want white people to say dumb things because it means that they're trying to learn and they're trying to figure things out Um, and so that's, we might say some dumb things, and we ask that you have some grace with us as we are just trying to do better. Um, and so we just kind of wanted to open up, and, and what, what are thoughts as we process what is going on right now in our country and what, what people of color face and that maybe we're seeing, maybe things are getting brought to light in our own lives of things that we need to work on. So mm-hmm. what, what thoughts as we process? Well, um, we're finding out what we already knew is true. We live in a messed up world. Okay, uh, and our country is is uh, just as messed up as every other country. You know, we've we've seen in the news where other countries are blowing up stuff in their own neighborhoods and burning stuff up, and and uh, and now it's it's kind of happening here. But but if you'll shut up and listen, you'll realize that what's happening here is um, people that don't have a voice don't know what to do, and and I know that. There's different folks that are causing the the, the big uh, the burnings and stuff like that, but there's a re- there is a problem. Absolutely, there is a problem, and and so yeah, you know, I spent time uh, this morning. I, I, you know, it, this has bothered me before, but this has got to bother me extra. You know, but I, I spent time this morning uh, talking with my African American neighbor, uh, and you know, uh, we were just. You know what's going on you know and uh and i and you know what i did is what i think we need to do is shut up and listen that's right uh listen to what's going on listen to how they've been treated uh and and these are you know they're and they're not a they these are our brothers and sisters you know we've always preached this as a you know it's it's god's made one race it's the human race that's right um when I went to Haiti, that was the message. First time I went to Haiti, that, that was the message I spoke there. I don't know how well it went over there, uh, but I, but that that's it. You know, I you know I, I praise God that that God put in my heart, I guess from birth, to not feel antagonistic towards any other people. Uh, just know we all you know came uh, from Adam and Eve. <laughs> These are our brothers and sisters. Uh, we talk about in our church a lot of times. We we want more color in our church. Uh, so what is it? Why why is it? Or is there something we're doing? Is there some aura that we're exuding that we don't realize? Uh, and so I think for us is 
uh, to take steps next step. We're not going to, you know, we're not going to solve anything here tonight. We're not going to solve anything on a Facebook post, social media. In fact, most of you need to just not post anything at all because uh, for the most part, we don't really know what to say. It would be to, to shut up and listen. Uh, there's things that I want us to do. I've got some ideas. Mm -hmm. I think God has given me for us to uh, move more into the community and, and do uh, some things that might be uh, crossover, reach out, show more love. For me, pastorally, I, I want to get with more pastors of color uh, to uh, work on some things. I want to be part of the solution uh, which still, again, I'm, I'm going to say it one more time, which means I need to shut up and listen. And, and so uh, don't focus on uh, the stuff that's happening on the, uh, the, cl the collateral damage that is happening right now. Don't, don't focus on that. Uh, in fact, my friend I talked about, he's, he, they, my, you know, the folks of color, they're like, man, you're messing it up for us when we're, you're doing this. We, we want to have a conversation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, and so let's um, let's be part of that. Let, let's help. Let's love. Um, yeah. So you're saying to like out of tonight, this is not about solutions. It's about starting a conversation, starting, you know, oh, yeah. hopefully having some things that you can think about. You know, I heard a, a message from McLean Bible Church, David Platt's church yesterday, where they had different leadership from their church that are um, men and women of, of all different races, different, you know, different environments and that kind of thing that, uh, one of the things that was said that really stood out to me was, um, one of their, one of their pastors said that he feels like a welcome guest in a church. And he said, that's the way that a lot of black people feel in a predominantly white church is they feel very welcome. They feel very loved on, but it's more like they're going to an Airbnb where it's not their home. It's a place that is set up for them, that they feel loved on. They feel like it's a great place to be but it's just not home the way that it is for some white people. I don't know the answer to that, but I can't come up with the answer to that, right? Like I think the conversations that we can have can help mm -hmm. with that. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm not saying LT Living Truth Church does all of these things wrong or all these right. things right. I just think we've all got to think about it, be open to what can we do better. Um, what do you start to say, Pastor Noel? Well, I'm going to say I know. I, I understand. That's what I wanted to hear because I know that we definitely, uh, you know, um, we won't. I, I I fear that sometimes that we want so much color in here that that I think sometimes maybe we, uh, maybe that's what we exude there. You know, is this uh, you're a welcome guest, but 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 we we want folks. We you know I've never been about white church, black church. You know, uh, in the early days when this church plant started, and we did receive some uh, monetary help for a few years. Uh, there's forums I had to fill out, you know, and, and one of the things on the forum, you know, would say, are you a white church or black church or this or that? And I was thinking I would never even check a box. Right. I'm like, what kind of question is that? Mm -hmm. You know, and I know that I know they didn't mean anything about it, surely, but I was never comfortable with that. And I, I don't like it. It shouldn't be that way. And so, yeah. again, uh, we wanted to address this in one sense tonight, knowing that more answers and more conversation mm -hmm. is yet to come. Yep. Uh, there's things that I want to do. There's some people that if I could have contacted ahead of time before and worked out some things, you know, we would have loved to have them here. Sure. Uh, but, um, but right now, uh, I just want you to know that we as a church take this seriously. We love people, red, yellow, black, and white, you yeah, know, and insane. you know, it, it's, it is God. It, it, to me, this is so stupid because it's the human race. And uh, so we need to listen and see what we can do better. So it may be that you have conversations with the folks in your neighborhood, yep. you know, and I'm having those conversations with folks in my neighborhood, and then reaching out. And this is where you're getting out of your comfort zone. You talk about where you got to go a little further, you know, and, and it may not be a nice conversation at first. And you may mm -hmm. need to let somebody cuss you out a little bit first and then go are you through yeah. you know and then and love on them you know so well the the gospel does give us that power uh i mean you you've definitely spoken credence to we live in a broken world our mm -hmm. world is broken i mean um on the macro sense and that, and then on a personal level right with my attitudes and um 
just even my own self-orientation and selfishness rooted in in my sin. And David said, I, even uh, in my mother's womb, I was conceived in sin. I was brought forth in sin. And so we all struggle with that. And so the good news of the gospel is that Jesus Christ paid our debt. That, And because we have reconciliation with him on a vertical plane, now that means that we can reconcile human relationships between one another, between uh, different races, even between uh, the people in our own household, right? Let's be honest. Um, but the gospel transforms everything. And uh, before you know Christ, all you know is, is maybe the commands, but you don't have the power to live it. But the Spirit of God inside you can help you do that which you cannot do on your own. The gospel is the, the battery, the power to be able to help us love when it's not easy to love. Um, I do love that you said to be silent. Because, you know, all throughout the Bible, God tells them a lot of times to be strong and courageous. But in that same passages, you'll see God say, and be silent. Sometimes you got to stand and be still and listen to other people. It's easy um, for many of us in, in the ethnicity that we are to hide behind ignorance. And I just, for me, I don't want to hide behind my ignorance. I would rather listen to someone and let them tell me about their hurt because that's what this is stemming from. This is hurt, hurting people who need us to be the arms and feet and the hands of Jesus right now more than ever to reach out and love them and embrace them. You know, Mark 12 says the two greatest things. Jesus said, what are the, what, he said, what's the two greatest commandments? Well, you got to love God and love people. But how are you going to love people if you're condemning them for what they're doing? Okay, you look at social media and the first thing you do is, oh, they shouldn't be doing that or oh, they shouldn't be doing that. And you're judging them behind a screen without ever even listening to that person. You're hiding behind your own ignorance. And so I would encourage us to step beyond that. You know, I grew up in a, in a, a large city. I've lived predominantly in large cities. And I have friends of, of all colors, and I'm so thankful for them. But I find myself sitting here going, I need to just listen to them. I want to just be quiet and listen to them and hear their story. So you said two things that, that made me think about a couple notes that I've got written down. Number one, um, you know, if we sit back in ignorance, then we'll be tempted to just say, well, the only thing that can solve this problem is Jesus, which is true. That's absolutely true. But... I think a lot of times what I'm seeing out of Christians, and maybe I've done this as well, is we say, well, only Jesus can solve the problem, so I'm going to sit back and wait. Mm. Um, but, but J.D. Greer, one of my favorite pastors to listen to, um, often uses the illustration that if, you know, if we're the body of Christ, you know, how does your body work? If you have an itch on your left elbow, the brain doesn't just send down some kind of magical feeling that makes that itch go away. It uses the right hand to scratch the left elbow, right? Whenever we have people in our world that are hurting, it may not be that we sit back and just say, hey, you know, hopefully they get Jesus and hopefully this problem gets solved. Hopefully these white people that are acting this way, their heart gets right by Jesus. That's our job as the body of Christ. Our job is to be what people need in Christ, to share Jesus with them, to love them the way that Jesus does, to help teach one group of people to help, um, you know, work to listen to the people that are hurting and see how we can help if there's a way that we can help. Uh, it's not for us to just sit back and say, well, you know, they just need Jesus and I'm going to sit here. Um, and the other thing is that, that made me think about is um, we've got a mutual friend, Norm and I do, that, that posted something this week that, that, that stuck with me that, you know, regardless of how you feel about the riots that are going on and the looting that are going, that's going on, don't let that distract you from the problem, right? I think if you've really taken a moment like I have to sit around and think, you've realized that there is a problem in your heart. Hmm. Maybe it's a small thing, but whatever it is, all of this stuff, the, the killings, the, the people who have been hurt, the people who have, that have been oppressed, and, and the lootings and all these different things have probably had some kind of something in your life bubble to the surface that you've realized there's a problem there in my life. So don't let this, this um, lawlessness over here distract you from the problem that is in your heart because it'd be mm. easy to say well see that's see what's going on here 
I don't need to address this because this, this is going on here. That's not how we as the body of Christ should respond. We should respond with what needs to change in me because I've got problems. I've got a problem in my heart, um, and, and I feel like there's been growth in my life, but I'm still not where I need to be in the way that I view God's creation, people that are image bearers of Christ. So that's right. You know, you got to you gotta look at yourself, okay? If, if there's a doubt, you need to always, you know, when you're being critiqued, you need to look at it. Is there anything that, that they are saying that might be true about me? That's right. And, and if you don't know about that, you just ask, you stop and you pray, God, search my heart. Mm. Search my heart and point it out, you know, and be open to that. Uh, this is a time for us as a church, as people, to repent of our sins and also just ask uh, God is there something is there something in me that I didn't realize was there yeah. because as you said culturally it, it came in and you know and maybe it came for whatever reasons it came you know ma you know maybe you're beat up on as a kid or something like that but that still doesn't justify right. your attitude you right. Know? Uh, right I mean and we're talking about a group of people that have been oppressed that are our brothers and sisters, mm -hmm. that even after they were set free, they were still oppressed. It was just more like a wink, wink, mm -hmm. you know? And so, um, you know, and look, our friends of color, they're not, they're not condoning this, the, the violence. They don't want that. It's not helping them. So, you know, I'm right now I'm almost, I'm at that point where I'm almost saying more than I should, because see, sure, I'm yeah. still in the need to be at the place where I shut up and listen, and some of y'all need to shut up on social media about it and just listen. Hmm. Don't don't go, oh, well, this ain't, no. No, just shut up and listen. Put yourself in another man's shoes, what he's been through or she's been through for hundreds of years. Yeah, uh, reminds me of what James says, be quick to hear, slow to speak, and slow to anger. So that's good advice, definitely. And, and remembering that when you are being quick to hear and slow to speak, if you're a parent, your kids are watching you. They're listening to what you talk about. And if you think they're not, just go talk about Christmas in the other room, and they'll know every word you just said in, in, in literally two minutes, and they can recite it word for word. So be careful what you're saying. You need to train the next generation. It's your job as parents. We always say this. It's your job as parents to teach your kids about Jesus. It is your job to teach them about Jesus. It's your job to teach them how he loved people. Yes. It's your job to teach them how he didn't see color. It's your job to show mm -hmm. them that. Also, kids, lead, kids follow by example more than they follow by just being told. I can tell my sons over and over and over the same thing, but when I do it and they see me in action doing it and living it out, it is a different world for oh, them. You mean modeling it, oh, living yeah. it? Yeah, actually, yeah. Actually being a disciple yeah. who makes disciples by mm -hmm. showing in my actions. Yep. And so if you have children around you or if it's your niece, nephew, grandkids, and I'm going to say grandkids extremely because, mm -hmm. I mean, I have parents and, yeah. and, and all of that. And you got to remember, God has called us to be one, unified together. We're not called to be this race or that race. And, and you know, I'm sorry for my ignorance in the past, and I, I, I deeply apologize for it because I don't want my kids to be raised in that same ignorance and, and like I said before, hide behind that same ignorance. Mm. Yeah. Absolutely. And I don't, no, again, none of what we've said tonight, we don't want any of it to come across that we've got answers. Yeah. We've got a lot of questions, and we've got a lot of openness to, to conversation. Um, yeah. Part of that, we're going we're gonna to have some opportunities in the future as we go forward to have conversations um, you know, publicly, maybe, maybe on the Hangout or maybe some different avenues for that. But we're going to kind of kick that off on Wednesday. I've got um, a friend of mine, a guy that I went to high school with, a guy named Brian Smith that served in youth ministry and um, you know, now he lives in Atlanta, but, but he's been, he's been very vocal on this topic as a person of color. He's been very vocal, you know, through, throughout the last several years, as I've seen on social media. And, um, I reached out to him because I know that he loves Jesus. Um, and I know that he has a voice that, that I think would be impactful to hear. And, and I want to talk to him. I want to hear from him. I want to learn from him. So on Wednesday at three o'clock, um, we're going to be on Instagram live. We're going to post that elsewhere after the fact, but Instagram live at three o'clock on Wednesday, just to have a conversation and, and for us to shut up and listen. Um, and so I want to start with saying, if you have questions, 
Um, if you're one of our students or an adult, you know, somebody that wants to tune in, you've got questions. He mentioned, I've, I've already tried listening. We had a conversation earlier today and um, just, just to kind of pitch this idea to him and, and see how he'd feel about doing it. And he said, look, just find out if your students have any questions or if they've got questions about things that they can say or things that they can ask or how they can do better, ask them what they need. And so if you're watching this tonight and you've got questions or, you know, if there's just some things that you would, would like to talk about in this discussion on Wednesday, let me know, and, and we will talk about those things for, for you to watch and hopefully learn from somebody who has lived through some of these things that we're talking about and that we're talking about ignorantly um, at this point from this stage of four white people. Um, you know, so any other thoughts? No. I, I'm afraid if we, you know, there comes a point that you can be stupid if you keep talking, so I think we're, we reached that point. Right. Amen. Questions, let us know. Um, if there's ways that you think we can further this conversation, let us know. Um, do better. Do better. Right. Do Take better. steps. Do better. Uh, one of the things I saw uh, the officers, some of the officers doing, the whole walk with me thing, thought that, that's been, I think, very effective bringing peace. And uh, you just go and you listen. Do it. Let's just take one step at a time. Let's start taking some real actual real steps. Let's not wait for it to blow by. Amen. So, analyze your heart. Hey, we read what last week? Search my heart. Mm -hmm. Right? Take that passage. What is that? Psalms 139. Um, read Psalms 139. Pray that. Ask God to search your heart and let you know. Uh, that's what I'm doing. Um, and I've got a long way to go. So, um, with that being said, we've talked about some great things living truth church the past 20 years and hopefully this conversation that we're having right now will move us into another great 20 years right hopefully this will be something that we can look at and say conversation was started and we saw growth mm -hmm. um so pastor norm will you close us out in prayer i will on the way to that though i'm going to read a passage from some of our reading from i think last week um Psalm 103, 10 through 12 says, He does not deal with us according to our sins, nor repay us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his steadfast love toward those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far does he remove our transgressions from us. In that time, as I read that, God spoke to me this way. He says, God does, God does not deal with us like he ought to. We don't get what we deserve. We could look at all the trouble that David caused and how other people were hurt by his sin, but we are just as guilty. Thankfully, God doesn't pay us back the way he should for our sin. You know, even with Adam and Eve, he said that they would surely die when they sinned, but then he showed them mercy. He didn't kill them right there on the spot. God proves merciful over and over his steadfast love for us is proven time and time again as his mercies renew every day. Let's pray. Lord, have mercy. That's what we need. God, we need your mercy, Lord. We have sinned as a people, as a nation, as a church. We've let our brothers and sisters be mistreated. We've made, I guess, dumb excuses for letting these things go on. Lord, I pray that right now real life change happens. Real culture change happens. Help us do better. We're in a country that does better at a lot of things. So help us do this better. These are our brothers and sisters, Lord. They, they have fought in wars with us, beside us. We are together. It's we. Help us not say they, them. Help there not be a other side of the tracks. God, I pray that you reach into our hearts and make that life change, God. Help us. We don't want to talk about it. We don't want words. We won't want nice word, nicely worded posts on social media. We want change God so help us now to shut up and listen on these things we've talked about Lord and then 
as far as this church where we've come to and and you in christ god we give you the praise the glory and honor to your name Mm -hmm. we thank you for the good start that east milton is off to lord we thank you for the ideas and plans and places that you'd help us to plant more churches at as we make disciples that make disciples god help us be about your business until you come back lord when you jesus when you show up help help i pray that you see us in action not missing in action god we love you jesus in your name we pray amen amen so as we wrap up just a couple things number one we didn't get an opportunity to talk about what god has been speaking to us um but i think it's evident that god's been speaking to us about some things in our life right now um and there are definitely things from the reading but there's also things that we felt like needed to be talked about right now the other thing is um right now our uh cr celebrate recovery has begun meeting back at the church they started at six o'clock tonight and so they should be right in the middle of their meeting time if that is a ministry that you or somebody that you know would benefit from monday nights six o'clock in the dining hall um, they, they meet in there. And so we would love to have you as a part of our Celebrate Recovery ministry, um, whether you like to, would like to serve, whether you're burdened for that, or if, you, if that's something you would benefit from or a family member would as well. Um, and then again, 3 o'clock on Wednesday, 3 p.m., um, we're just going to have an honest conversation on the LTC underscore outlet Instagram page um, about this issue, these issues that, that we need to get better at, that I need to get better at, and we're going to have an opportunity to listen. So uh, we hope to see you then. We hope to see you on Sunday, 815, 945, and 1115, or East Milton at 10 o'clock. And uh, we'll be back to Thursday night LTC Hangout, Lord willing, next Thursday. So we'll see you all at any of those times. Amen.